Alright guys, it's AMI Customs here. We're going to go ahead and do a how-to video for how to recone a subwoofer. Um, we've got a HDC4 um, sub made by Soundcubed um, that we will be reconing today. This is actually one of my spare woofers for my truck. Actually, um, it's a brand new basket. It was uh, prepped and cleaned uh, prior, uh, which I'll put up a link in the description of how to remove a blown sub to get it prepped for a recone that I've done uh, in the past and we're going to need to clean the gap out. It's just been taped up for storage until this point when it's ready to be recut. A couple different kinds of tape um, to clean the gap out. Also to tape up the holes underneath here on the spider landing which I'll get into later. Uh, you'll need CA glue and activator and then this is just a spray uh, the nozzle that comes with the activator so you can spray it. If you're doing the carbon caps like this that don't have a lip on the edge, um, which we will be installing on this particular sub. One thing to note, you want to sand this edge all the way around with like 220 grit or 400 grit just to kind of rough it up slightly so that way the glue has something to kind of bond to. Uh, it takes a different kind of glue, this is actually called Wonder Glue, it dries clear so that way uh, you don't have a nasty looking glue bead on the cone. You also need obviously your recone, which this is an HGC4 recone, dual one, uh, flat, flat wound aluminum coil. That's a four layer coil, 10 gauge direct leads uh, onto the, the tensils. And then the other part of the recone kit, which comes with dust cap, comes with a couple of the various things that I don't particularly use, but some people do. Uh, the shims that are in the kit. It also has instructions in here for if this is your first time, but that's kind of what this video is going to explain. So, uh, other little tips and tricks to do, the things that I do when I'm doing a recon, uh, that are kind of things to check to make sure you're doing it right. Uh, the other thing that I like to use is compressed air for cleaning the gap out, and I have this real high focus nozzle to put a lot of pressure into the gap. So, uh, first things first, we'll go ahead and clean this gap area out. So we'll go ahead and remove this tape. And what I'm basically doing is just looking down inside the gap to make sure I don't see any wire or anything from like a coil or any kind of trash that's down in there. Which it does look fairly clean. So I don't have to do a whole lot of work. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to blow it out with the compressed air. And then I'll stick tape down in there to pull any residual metal or anything that could be in there. Okay. Everything looks fairly clean, so we'll just run some tape down in there just to check everything out, make sure. We're okay. I just like to fold the tape over so it kind of sticks on itself. So you have the sticky part of the tape exposed on both sides. So when you actually force this down in the gap, you're picking up on both sides all the way around. And there's a little bit of trash that come out of there. So, and we'll do it one more time with a fresh piece. The idea is to keep cleaning the inside of the gap out until your tape looks clean. We'll blow it out one more time just to make sure that we're all getting cleaned out. trick that I do uh, right after I clean the gap out especially on these subs because I have a pretty big landing spot right there I will take one of my dust caps that are nice and clean and just set over it that way it keeps any trash from falling down in there while I'm trying to prep other stuff or okay. check other things next thing that I like to check is make sure that the coils ohm out right on the recone before you install the recone so I got my voltmeter here Set on ohms. Uh, first thing, always check your resistance of your ohm meter before you ever even hook it up to make sure that you don't have something crazy high or something like that. So this ohm meter just sitting here is reading 0.2, so we know to add 0.2 to whatever it picks up here. So we'll check one coil. It should be one ohm because they're dual ones. I can hold it. Okay. 
So 1.2, remember we had 0.2, so we add 0.2 to it, we're right at 1 ohm. Check the other side. Okay, right at 1.2. Um, the biggest two. key, what you're going to definitely need, is these shims. Without these, you can't get the coil aligned right. So they send you a couple different sizes. Okay, now the way I like to do this, I like to position this, the recon inside the woofer with the actual shims in there. Um, and then I'll slide the sub up and hold it in place uh, while I uh, lay my glue bead down and then I'll just slide it straight down. I don't take it completely back out. But the first thing that we have to do, because on this basket it has holes drilled around here, I don't want glue to run through these holes so we're going to tape up the back side. This is where I said you need a different kind of tape. I like to use this 3M tape because it's pretty strong, holds really, really well. Okay, everything's all taped up. Let's go ahead and test fit the recone. So we'll start installing our shims. To see how everything fits. What I do is I kind of alternate the shims on each side because they don't go all the way around. So I'll do one this way, then do one that way, and just go back and forth like that. Okay, one thing I forgot to mention, you're going to need clamps to clamp the spider landing down. And uh, I like to use just like a decal spreader or bondo spreader to put pressure on the surround when we go to glue that down. We'll do the spider landing first and then do that top part second. So we've got the shims in. I raised the whole assembly up about an inch so I can get to the spider landing here. Uh, I got all but one of the shims in that's supplied in the recone kit. Um, I would recommend using the thin one first and then putting the thicker ones in because they're much easier to get in there uh, than, the, than the thin shim. So we'll go ahead and start applying the glue and then we'll drop it down. Now I apply a pretty generous glue bead because I'm a firm believer in doing it once and doing it right and not having to re-glue it a second time because your woofer over-excursioned or unloaded and then ripped the spider landing off of the basket. So if you glue it strong enough the first time and apply enough glue, it is a little bit more work for you later on, but if you have to do a recone because there's a lot of glue you got to remove, but it just ensures a better bond and a better assembly that way. Making sure our screw holes are centered up on the top. Okay, so the spider landing is resting all the way around, so we'll take our clamps. Okay, so now that we're clamped, We'll go around this edge here and spray it with activator. Okay, All the spots where they have tape, I'll pull the tape out and then shoot some activator up underneath. 
We got the bottom spider pack glued down. Got a nice heavy bead glued all the way around, as you can see there. So now we're going to move up to the surround. This is a nice little trick I like to do that's, I believe, unique to me. I've never seen anybody else do this before. Um, I have a blown six and a half that's inverted sitting on the cone with just a gallon of paint sitting on top to keep pressure on the cone to keep the suspension pushed down so that way it puts tension on the glue joint. Now it has been activated with activator so it is the outside surface is solid but I want to keep tension on it to keep it tight to the, the basket. So the next step, and I haven't pulled the shims out yet, they're still in there so that way everything stays straight. Um, the next step is going to be to glue the surround down. Now the way I do this is uh, I've used these little dowel rods that are made out of wood and cut them to about an inch and a half, two inches and spaced them at each speaker hole on the basket and then place the other end on the foam surround to hold the surround up while I glue it down. Then when I'm ready to let the surround attach to the basket, all I gotta do is drop one out at a time, let the surround fall down, put pressure on it with the Bondo spreader, hit it with the activator, and you don't even have to use clamps. So, um, but I'll use clamps too, just for good measure, just to make sure it's clamped tight. But, we'll go ahead and get this thing knocked out. So we're just going to go ahead and apply our glue all the way around here, which don't be stingy with the glue, you can be pretty generous with it. It'll just run out on the back side of the basket or run out over the top of the surround, which isn't going to hurt a thing. Like, it, like I've said before, it's better to have a little bit too much glue than definitely not enough because there's nothing more that will tick you off more than not putting enough down inside of your surround pulls up or side of your spider pack pulls up because you didn't apply enough glue. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and glue the dust cap on. So, go ahead and lay our bead of glue down here. Don't forget to pull your shims out, which we've already went ahead and did. Got the surround glued all the way down. And what's nice is on these subs, I have kind of a little indentation on the 15s uh, to lay the dust cap in. And I'll set this down in here. Made a little handle out of tape to set on there. So we'll go ahead and set this down in there like so. Get it centered nice. Pull the tape off. Everything's good. No noise, no nothing rubbing. Everything sounds great. So the next step will be to actually apply the carbon cap. Alright, so now we're gonna put the carbon cap on. So we just put the first dust cap on. So we set it on there and spin the sub to make sure it looks like it's straight, which it looks pretty good. Just gonna keep watching it and kind of stand back and look at it while it's spinning. It looks pretty straight to me. So what I'm gonna do is mark with a pencil. And I'm applying the Wonder Glue for the carbon cap, which I know this stuff looks like Elmer's wood glue, but it's not. I can assure you it does dry clear, and it looks very good once it's done. It's a nice clean bead, the bottom layer of the cap, and then we'll put a little bit of weight on top of the carbon cap, and then put some more glue on top. So.
Okay. That's it. All right, guys. Uh, we got the recon done. Um, pretty much the only thing we got to do now is wait about 24 to 48 hours for this glue to dry and set up completely. When it's completely dry, it'll be clear all the way through. So that's when we'll know. Then we can actually put the sub in and test it and start playing it and breaking it in, loosen the suspension up, and then start actually using it as an extra woofer. Um, one other thing, uh, be sure to, if you need to buy any kind of amp subs, anything from SoundCube, um, one of the coupon codes that they're offering is NASTY with the number one. And if you enter that code at checkout, you will actually get uh, some free gear. So they'll hook you up with something free. Uh, for uh, your order and that's really all I got guys hope you enjoyed the video let me know what you guys think about uh, the recon process and if you have any questions um, be sure to ask them uh, below in the comment section and uh, keep it loud